Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. Welcome to the channel and another uh, repair video. Today on my bench, I have something I picked up at a grad sale. I, I always keep my eyes open for this stuff. Um, I'm a fool for it, so let's have a look. It is a Brentwood record player, solid state, stereo compatible. It's not stereo, but it's stereo compatible. I'm not sure what that means. But this is... Um, uh, model DRF 60 uh, record player. It's a uh, cheap transistorized bare minimum record playing device that they sold back in the 60s. This is something you would give to your teenage daughter so you could, she could listen to her uh, Beatles 45s on. Um, this one came from, um, it's called Brentwood and that's a host brand for, uh, this is sold exclu exclusively by Wolco department stores. Uh, Woco was a big uh, department chain in Canada, and from what I understand, it was in the States and the, in the UK as well, back in the 60s up to actually the 90s. But the one, the one Woco store that, that was by uh, where I lived when I was a child, it, uh, I remember it back in the 60s, and I remember it back maybe 1980, oh, I can't remember the year, but it turned into a Zeller's. And, uh, but apparently all the Woco stores, uh, globally were, or not globally, but were bought up by, uh, Walmart in the U S and in Canada. But, uh, anyways, enough about Wal uh, Woco. Let's have a look at this. So it's 45 on here now. It came with a record. I don't know if you can, uh. This is a Dutch, made in Holland. It's a Dutch album or, or single. I'm not, I've never heard of this before. And I, I don't see a date on it, but it does say made in Holland. And it's all printed in Dutch, 45 RPM. So let's have a look at this first. It's got a platter, a little, uh, usually they have the um, built-in 45 adapter. That can drop out of place so you play your lps it has a speed switch uh 16 33 45 78 and n i believe is for neutral maybe let me try that neutral wow listen to that can you hear that pretty awful to dry bearings okay it's got a on off volume and uh, punctures for a speaker uh, holes for a speaker it's got your crappy tone plastic tone arm and uh, ceramic cartridge it's got a stylus and it's all wired in, so it looks like it should work. Wires are attached, and they're not broken. So let's just put this down so it doesn't get damaged. Um, and then it's got the cheesy paper um, wrap, let's say. Um, I cleaned this half. I don't know if you can notice the difference between the dirty and the clean. It's got that faux leather texture it's actually just paper it's peeling in some spots i have to glue that back down and then uh, here we got some paper that was ripped off maybe somebody had something taped here um, there's another spot here and you can see it the paper got ripped away more tape i am assuming so let's uh, try this out and see what it does this is a garage sale find i picked it up for 10 bucks and uh yeah, I always grab these when I see them because I have a place in my heart for them, I guess. My sisters used to have this, and they listened to their old, uh, the Monkees and the Beatles and uh, you name it, all the, all the hits of the, day, of the day in the 70s, 60s, Tiny Tim, all that. Okay, so let's try this out. Turn it on. It's quite loud. Listen to that more.
pretty noisy. Okay, let's try this. We've got zero volume on the speaker. Singing in Dutch. Okay. So we got no audio amplifier working. A little pop from the speaker when I turn it on and off, so something's alive there. Okay, so let's uh, open it up, have a look inside. Okay, I got the screws out, so let's pull off the platter because we don't need that falling off. Need some lubrication for sure. Hmm. All right, I got the screws out. This is locked down, okay. Look at this thing. It's got a schematic pasted to the bottom. Pretty cool. Germanium transistors, 2SB 33s. Four transistor, little lamp fire. Pretty cool. Why isn't this working? So we got our motor in our power transformer. The two secondary windings are going to the amplifier. Simple half wave rectifier, capacitor of 470 at 16 volts. This whole thing's anchored by the pot. Uh, what else is going on here? These are two output devices and then in one, two stages. One stage, two stage in the output. Trans transformer coupled. Speaker output transformer. Very simple. Very simple. So why isn't it working? I have a feeling we got a dead cap in here. There's only uh, three caps. One, two, three. Or we might have a dead transistor. We don't know yet. But let's check those three caps and see what we got for ESR on those. So maybe they're dead. It's nice it has a schematic. But it doesn't match the um, it doesn't match the circuit because here they got if you can see this here they got full wave rectification here and on here they have a single diode so it looks like they cut some corners okay let's get on with this. Zero that. Four seventy. That's probably not bad. Okay, this one here. Four point nine. What is that thing? It's a 33 microfarad at 6 volts. So yeah, it should be probably around 3 ohms or less. And one more here. What is it? This one. Forty-two. There's our culprit right there. 
This one is uh, 10 volt, 10 microfarad. Yeah, that one's open. So let's replace that one cap. Let's bridge it first. Let's see if that's the problem. No, I can't bridge it. Yeah, let's bridge it, see if that's the problem. I'll get a 10 microfarad cap. Okay, I got a 10 microfarad cap here. Let's try it out. I gotta be careful. I got line voltage coming up to this switch and it's on this PCB board right here and it's all uh, intertwined with the, uh, the supposed to be isolated side of the transformer. You see there's traces here that are 120 volts. And uh, look at this. The one wire is probably less than a millimeter away. Let's just take this and bend it away. That's pretty poor design right there, having 120 volts on that little amplifier board. Anyways, uh, let's turn it on. Where's the bottle volume? Let me turn this on. And out this so I can scratch the needle. Jump this here. Still getting nothing. Still getting nothing. I think I got a dead transistor here because those two capacitors, uh, one of the capacitors is a problem, but I guess I got a transistor bad here. So let's shut this on and off. And let's test some of these germaniums. Pretty simple circuit. Just a matter of four transistors. good. Where is the other one here? That one measures okay as well. Doesn't mean they're not dead, they're just not shorted. So let's uh, look at the two output devices. I think I got one here. Okay, I think I don't have any shorts. So what I'm going to just start doing now is I'm going to start feeding in a signal and I'm going to feed in a signal probably at this transformer stage and uh, we'll, see, we'll confirm if the output stage is working or not. And if it is, we'll go back, and we'll uh, inject it into the base of this transistor and then the base of this transistor. Um, somewhere we've got a disconnect here. Potentiometer is a one meg. Measures out at one meg. I don't think the potentiometer is the problem because uh, it would go scratchy, it wouldn't go open. So if I look at the schematic, there's only three electrolytics. Uh, where are they? One is here. It's a power f supply and it's a 500. They got it as 500 here, but it's a 470. 
That one's definitely not bad because we would hear a loud hum. Um, there's a 33 here, but this is on the uh, emitter circuit. Emitter. Uh, this is pulling. It's going across that resistor. That would not. This capacitor. This this capacitor failed. This would not prevent this from working. Um, the 10 is down here. And again, if this was open, it would not prevent it from working. So where is the problem here? Maybe we got a bad resistor. A 20K adjustment. I don't see that on the board. The schematic does not match the... Uh... I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to remove the uh, amplifier from the chassis. I'd like to know where this thing was made. It has no indication of where it was built, but it's made from parts from all over. Let me check these transformers. Maybe they went open. Okay, there's the primary of the first audio transformer that's 236 ohms here's the secondary of the first transformer and this is uh, 103 ohms the next one up is the output transformer and I should have a low impedance here this is the primary 24.3 and then this is be the secondary is probably be Point six. Yeah, we got a speaker across it too. That's why it's low. Two SB thirty three. All right. So what I'm going to do first? I'm going to replace this cap because we we know it's bad. Let's pull it out. And we have to remember where the negative is. It's not marked on the board. Negative towards that resistor, okay? It's a Rupicon. Let's measure this. So it's uh, 10 microfarad at 10 volts and it's coming back at 6.5 microfarads and has ESR of 129 ohm, 130 ohms. So definitely could put, let's replace that with a new cap. Speaker wire broke off. Very stiff wire. It's solid stranded wire. What kind of joke is this?
Let's check these other caps as well because I don't think that they're great either. Let's try this one. Pull it out and check it. They could probably just replace them all. It'd be the simple thing to do. Let's check this one. This is a 470 at 16 volts Rubicon. Probably 50 years old now. Uh, let's see. This one comes back at 770 microfarads, which is a false high because it's leaking so bad. And it's got 179 milliohms. Uh, this one should be less than 180 milliohms, and it is actually 180 milliohms. But since it's got such high capacitance, high leakage, I'm just going to replace it. It's a 470 at 16. I'll put it in a thousand microfarad. Why not? So here's the 33 uh, microfarad cap removed, and I'm just gonna check it here, see how healthy it was. And it is measuring 57 microfarads, which is way off tolerance, it's too high. And uh, ESR is about 6.6 .6 ohms, it should be about half that. So this cap is done for, um, but that wasn't the cause of the problem because this cap is, is uh, bridging a resistor and it's just used to uh, squelch some AC across it. I make sure this is unplugged before I start handling it. Um, one thing I didn't do is I didn't check to see if our cartridge, our ceramic out, uh, cartridge has any output. So I could do that right now on the, uh... Ooh, that pot does not feel it's crunchy inside. Um, I'm going to check it with the scope to see if we have any output on that cartridge. So let's tie in the scope and have a look. Okay, got my scope leads connected across the input of the amplifier. Let's turn up the sensitivity here. Ceramic cartridges put out, uh, let's say, well, it's less than a volt. They're pretty high output devices. Let's see if we... touch this with my finger you should see something on the scope and I see nothing so let's move our probes closer just to make sure it's not the wiring okay yeah that ceramic cartridge is buggered nothing coming out of it there's not much you can do for these it's, it's just a ceramic element and uh, if it cracks or gets broken that's pretty much the end of it, it could be wires that came off of it let's try this again let's turn this up to max I don't think we're getting anything out of this. It's dead. Dead, dead, dead. But we should still be able to get a hum or a hiss out of the amplifier when I crank it up maximum volume. And I'm not getting that either. So I think we might have two problems here. I'm not sure. Um, I'm going to check the continuity of these wires. And then we'll pull this ceramic cartridge out and have a close look at it. All right, so this is just a snap together device, I'm pretty sure. Maybe we can just pry it out. It's not put in there very... Because these are replaceable. There we go. And these just have push on connectors. There we go, there's our cartridge. Let's have a good look at this. All right, so let's tie into this cartridge and see what's going on with it. We're not getting any output from the uh, terminals. And what does that mean? Well, it is a ceramic uh, cartridge. So let's just check the resistance of it. I expect it to be um, 
a ceramic cartridge is be, behaves like a capacitor, right? So it's going to have pretty high uh, capa uh, ohm resistance. Let's check this here. And what are we getting? We're getting into the mega ohm range. Not really settling. Okay. And if I put it on my capacitance meter, what does it tell me? So I don't have that in the field right now. It is giving me a 1.9 microfarad. That seems odd. It seems awfully high. Maybe not. Maybe it's a multi-layer device. I don't know how these physio devices work. But anyways, let's... Um, one other thing I can do is I can apply a signal here and we should get some kind of me mechanical uh, action. Either... Um, it's like a transducer, right? So it's going to trans transduce uh, a physical motion into an electrical signal or it can do the other way around. It can do an electrical signal into, into a physical motion. So let's get my signal generator here. It's turned on, set for three kilohertz at one volt. Connect that up and then we'll turn it on. And I hear nothing. Let me turn up the volume on this one volt. 10 volts. 14 volts. It would definitely be making some kind of a noise or squeal or something, but it's uh, it's not. So get rid of that. Shut that off. Let's open it up. Now it's a shell of two halves, and it's got a latch here, and it's got a rivet here. So all I need to do is drill out this rivet, and this cover should come off. So let's do that now. I'm to pick up a pick up a suitable bit for drilling that out. What do I need? Something small like that should do it. that should do the business. Carefully drill this out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this rivet. It's like a brass rivet. And when I put it back together, I'm just going to use a tiny screw. Right? So that's my plan. So we can open this up. to spin now. Let me see if I got it close. Should be fairly close. I'm going to push it through. Not yet. through there. I think it's push that out now. Push this. There we go. Okay. Get rid of this. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Let's pull this rivet out.
Okay, so we have a bad pin connection here. I wonder. That one's connected, this one isn't. Let's try getting this out. Broke. Connection broke. I wonder if there's anything we can do for that. Can we solder it? Looks like a gold foil or some kind here. What is this? Let's lift this up. No, I don't want that. First, let's test this. We got one. Let's see if that's where the brake was. Clip this here. So what do we got here? Let me zoom in a little bit and show you. We got right in the middle here, this red thing. Well, it's not really red. It's just, it's got like some kind of red. It's distorted. That is the physio element. And it has a rubber block on the end here. This is the bridge that the stylus sits in. Stylus sits in here and it vibrates as it goes down the record. And what it does is this twisting action actually generates a voltage within this fiesel element. And on the other end, we have another rubber block and there's two electrodes that are, I don't know where those electrodes, if they just pinned on there or if they actually come out of the element itself, but they're thin strips of foil and they look like they might be gold plated or they might be just brass. This is tarnished, so it can't be gold plated. Some kind of a silver maybe. And then it makes connections with these two pins, right? So what I'm gonna do, I propose to do, I can't, re I don't know if I can really solder this onto the pins. Let me try lifting this foil up. If I apply a signal, we should hear something. I hear nothing. Hmm. So now I suspect these foil connections inside are maybe broken or oxidized to the point where they don't. Let me try releasing this from the rubber block. Give it a little tug. 
and try it again. Hmm. Okay, here's a piezoel element. I just want to see if my generator is making noise. Okay, you can hear that. Let me turn that up. Three volts. It is working, but it's quiet. Now let's try this. I'm getting anything. I'm going to pull this rubber block off. Okay, those foil uh, wires are embedded and there's nothing I can do to get it to work again. Unfortunately. this back on. There we go. No, it's dead. Completely dead. Can't be fixed. Now I do have a couple options here. I have in my part stash I have a couple more. Uh, let's see, but I think they're stereo. Here's a stereo one. I have another one here. That's a tape head. Here's another stereo. They have um, two elements in here. You can see them. One's red, one's blue. And they're probably right about 90 degrees apart from each other. And as the needle tracks the record groove, it uh, signals uh, one or the other to produce a, a voltage. Let me see what I can do here. Maybe I'll find another one, maybe. All right, so we determined that this cartridge is no more. It's not going to work ever again. Um, so I need to replace it with something that's going to function. And I do have two antiques here. One is a static 133D. This is a stereo cartridge and it is working. And here is another one. This is like a no-name, uh, just a really no-name brand. I don't think, I don't even think it's uh, marked with a, na a manufacturer. I'd have to tear it apart. But this one here is also a stereo one and it's kind of uh, the wrong size, kind of awkward. So I, I could substitute in one of these. I just have to bridge the left channel and right channel together because it's a mono player. But I opted to do this instead. Going on AliExpress, I'm gonna order one of these cartridges. This is a ceramic, uh, 
cartridge stereo, uh, two dollars fifty cents. I'm gonna have it sent to me, and I'm gonna fit this one and make it work. Um, I think this is the best route to go. This is a modern equivalent of of this that might be already forty or fifty years old. So uh, put that in there. But for right now, I'm going to work on the audio amplifier. I'm going to feed it some signals and see if we can get it to work. Okay, so what I've done is I replaced those two solid core wires with some stranded wires so they don't break the minute you look at them. And uh, it should be a little more flexible without snapping. Um, I've got this plugged into the isolation transformer. It's not powered up. What I want to do is feed it a signal for my signal generator. And I checked on the schematic. This schematic does not match this but I did check on the schematic and there is a blocking capacitor. Yeah, there's a blocking capacitor before it goes into this transistor. So I'm confident I can just hook this up and it should work. So I got, let's turn the power on. Turn this up. Oh, well, we got working amplifier. Let's uh, turn it down a little bit. You gotta be careful where you touch here because it's all uh, 120 volts. You can really zap yourself. Let's turn this signal on. It's pretty quiet. Let's turn it up. Amplitude. Two volts. Seems to be working. So we're good that way. Shut this off. So I think we're okay with the amplifier. Um, one thing I want to do is I do have those cartridges. I just want to test one of these cartridges with this circuit to see how it works. So disconnect the signal and we'll connect this to the right channel. Okay, turn it back on. Turn it up. It's working. So that's enough. That's enough for playing a record. So we'll leave this alone, put it all back together, and when the new cartridge comes in, I'll install it and then we'll have a test. One thing I want to do is service this motor and uh, drive assemblies, make it a little quieter. I already put a drop of oil on the on the motor itself. I don't think the motor is a problem. If I turn the motor on. You can't even hear it. It's spinning. And it's silent. Okay, let's do this bearing. Got a C clip. Washer. And we got a dry bearing here. So let's clean this up. Now the rubber on this ain't bad. I'm looking at it here and I don't see any big, oh, there's a little dip here. I wonder if it cleans very well. Yeah, it's gonna get cleaned. Just wanna clean this off. Clean the 
this off. I'm going to do this as well. It's not really dirty at all. Okay. Well, I'm going to put a little rubber renew in that. Rubber renew. Highly toxic. Don't breathe. aggressive solvent cleaner that goes and strips off the top layer of rubber and exposes fresh fresh rubber underneath it doesn't really do any damage to the rubber it just kind of strips it okay we can put this back together get some synthetic lube Plenty on. Okay, reassemble this. There we go. How does that sound? Probably a lot quieter. Let's lubricate. Uh, let's shut this off. Let's lubricate this as well. This is kind of a grease. It hasn't hardened or anything but it's let's clean it up we'll put fresh okay that's all clean now. Let's lubricate this. A little bit quieter. There's grease coming out the top. I think that's going to have to do. This is not high fidelity. All right, so it's about a month later. I had these cartridges come in. These are just cheap Chinese ceramic cartridges ordered on aliexpress i think i paid about a buck fifty or dollar fifty two dollars fifty cents each and um, these can ha be had for cheap and these are stereo cartridges you can see by the the back side it's got four connections and uh, uh, you can see that but it's marked left and right positive negative so i'm going to have to wire these to 
uh, transducers in series. Here's what it looks like without the protective cover. It's nothing special. The needle, I believe, is replaceable. Maybe not. This red part might pull out. I don't want to break it. But it's uh, not that important. One thing I do want to do is I want to weigh this. Uh, I want to weigh the old tone arm weight and get the, you know, let's pull this off. And I have a scale here. So let's do that now. Just gonna put that scale there. I think this will work. Okay. So let's turn this on. And let's see what our weight is with the old cartridge. And we're at 8.1 grams. It's pretty heavy. Let's take that off and try it with the new one. 6.8. Quite a bit of weight savings there, which is good because you really don't want your stylus to be um, putting down on the album more than five grams. It's, uh, well, on a high end turntable, you want this to be about a gram and a half. But uh, on this cheap, cheap stuff, um, you know, anything under five grams is, is probably preferential. Like I said, there's a tang here on this side and one on this side inside the shell, and this just snaps in place. But this one won't do that. I'm gonna have to figure out some mounting strategy. I don't wanna sit uh, simply hot glue it in place because I'm just adding weight. So what I figured I could do is I could get some of this pink polystyrene and I can cut a um, kind of an adapter, let's say. Let's get a knife. And if I can just cut a piece that would uh, fit inside the head shell and then it would kind of, I'll cut it, I'll cut a, uh, I'll probably do it like this uh, without measuring. I'm just going to do this quick. And my light knife is dull. So that's, so it's got a block of foam like this. I'll cut it to fit so it fits snugly in the head shell. I might even trim it so it's not so thick. And it'll be a tight snug fit in here. And then what I'll do is I'll cut a channel in here to hold this. And then once you snap it in, it'll hold it all tight. And uh, that'll be good. And this doesn't, what does this weigh? Probably nothing. Three tenths of a gram. But once I carve it all down, it'll probably go down to a tenth of a gram. All right, so here's what I've done. I've done about five minutes of whittling with a sharp knife. And I made a little, carved out a little block of foam and I made a holder for my cartridge. And um, I purposely angled it. I don't know if you can see that, but this line here, the bottom of the cartridge, you want that line to be parallel with the record. And then you want your stylus sticking down. Um, you can't mount it like that because the, it, this will touch the record and uh, at the same time hit the stylus, but you want to have a bit of an angle at it. So what I did is I just carved out the foam a little deeper on one side just to give it that angle and um, just to position the cartridge properly. And I made it just wide enough so that it's, you know, it's, it's not very tight. It just slides in and out. It's easy. Um, but once I put, slide this foam block into the head shell, it'll compress and it'll hold that cartridge in very tight. I don't need any adhesives or anything like that. This would be easy to change. So, and then I also added a couple of 1K resistors on the outputs of the left and right channel. And I also tied the two negatives to together. This is gonna be the ground connection for the cartridge or the common, let's call it a common. And I soldered those two together. And then our signal is gonna come out the top two um, posts. And I, what, what I did is I combined them with two 1K resistors. The reason I wanna have a resistor in there is because these transducers, when they're, when they're excited with a vibration, they create a voltage. And if I just tied these two together directly 
any voltage that's induced or created or generated, let's say, on the one side will be transferred over to the other side and that transducer will try and turn that electrical signal back into a, 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 a physical motion. So they'll be fighting each other. So I wanted to put a little bit of resistance in there just to give them a cushion so that they don't have to fight each other and they can work together and combine the signal into one, both left and right channel, into a mono signal for our mono amplifier. So all we need to do now is, uh, I might have to do a little bit more trim and fit, and uh, but right now I can probably connect this if we have enough wires here. What is going on? Seems like we lost some of our wires. So anyways, the green wire is our signal wire. The black wire is our ground wire. So let's connect this up. I might need to extend these. It might not fit over this. Hope it does. Uh, it will. And then connect our ground wire up. I'm gonna need a pair of pliers. So we're connected. Now we can test it too. We can turn this on. You can hear the motor going. You can see the motor going. You can't see the motor. But if I turn this up. We now have stylus picking up a signal. It's full blast. Touch it with my fingers. It's working. All right. So let's have a look at this and see how it lines up. So apparently, the trick is you're supposed to put this one on this point first and see how it lines up. Well, that's pretty terrible. Quite a bit out. Um, I don't think there's any lining this. This tone arm is... Actually, if I do that, it works, but I need to move that stylus ahead probably about three quarters of an inch. So let's try that. Pull this up. If I can just slide this ahead, I might have to take it right out. Let me take it right out. It's probably too far back in there. So I want to be careful, this foam is really fragile. So let's put this back together. And let's move this as far forward as I can get it. Probably right about here. Okay, let's try that. A little better, it's a little better. Still off way a bit. It did help. It probably needs to be extended another. Uh, let's see, where are we there? Probably needs to be extended another quarter inch or so. But anyways, let's check the other side and we go back here and plant this one. We are a little bit, we're a little bit, yeah, it still needs to go this way. Let me see what I can do here. Okay, this is about as good as it's gonna get. This is as far forward as I can move that cartridge without cutting a hole in the front of the head shell. Um, you see it's a little bit off there. And if I move it down to here, Uh, we can see that it's, it's it's a good compromise, whatever. It's just cheap garbage uh, tone arm. But you can see that this is a problem here too. When I lay the cartridge down, see how it wants to flop to the side? And I think that's a problem with the garbage plastic hinge they got here. 
I'm not going to make this any better than what it is intended to be, but at least it's working now. So we can do a test. It's funny, they have the tone arm rest is not accessible when you have a LP on there. Anyways, let's take this off and give it one last final test of listening. This is a 33, so let's turn the speed down. I don't know if any of you will recognize this one. But it's working. So that was the, uh, that was my goal. So we got it going. We got a good record player now. It's actually got surprisingly good fidelity too for what it is. Um, you know, considering it's just a car, uh, ceramic cartridge. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a knife here. And you see this. I'm just going to take a knife here and just slice this. And remove this foam hanging out. Make it look better. Do the same on the other side. There we go. All right, that's it. It's back together and I'm done. So this we replaced three capacitors. Um, probably wasn't required, but we did it anyway. Let's have a final listen. Maybe you guys recognize this one. I don't know. It's good party music. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.